Scars, the souvenirs of the soul. Scars, everyone has them. For some, they come in the form of physical scars, like a cut on the skin. While for others, they come in the form of emotional scars, like a dream deferred. When you think about scars, most people recall the first time trying to ride a bicycle. Or for instance, the time they skinned their knee playing a game at recess with their friends. While this has happened to me in my younger years, I've become accustomed to a series of scars that are unnoticed to the common man. Take a look at me. Do you see what I see? Growing up over the years, I've had my fair share of physical scars. From the first time trying to inline skate and falling flat on my face, to the time I burnt myself trying to cook my first meal away from home during my freshman year in college, I've grown used to the numerous band-aids and neosporin, and the obvious battle scars of my achievements. As I grow older, however, these physical scars have started to fade. And while the wounds have long since bled out and healed, the scars remind me of a place I've been, or an experience I've had to overcome in my past. Flashback to 2003, the year of my graduation from high school. Standing in front of my fellow students and peers, I recall myself pronouncing what I labeled as one of my finest hours. I managed to graduate with a 4.0, become valedictorian, and had boundless plans to attend THE Ohio State University to obtain my bachelor's degree. Now speaking as a Yankee, this wasn't easy in a group of southerners, believe me. Four years later, I would attend medical school, find a distinguished residency to settle into, and then finally become what I've always dreamed, a physician. Over ten years later, however, I'm not even halfway to that goal. But why, you may ask? Scars. 2005 was a cardinal year in what would start to be the downfall of my dreams. I recall driving one day from a small town in west central Ohio to school at OSU Lima. Exiting off I-75, I never saw the semi barreling out into the intersection. In a flash, I was pinned in my car, trapped between a Cadillac that looked like an accordion and what was left of the side of the semi's cab. Thankfully, I survived without a scratch. Unfortunately, my car and my only means of transportation to school did not. Sitting out two quarters hurt, and it hurt bad. I didn't have the money, even if insurance, to get a new car, nor with my savings to buy something reasonable enough to drive 30 minutes a day to get where I needed to go. My parents were states away, only able to provide moral support in my time of tragedy. But somehow, some way, I managed to get back on my feet and make things work and start back in the spring of 2006. You know, I never imagined something was worse as that, being stuck in a place and able to continue along the journey. But unfortunately for me, the next scar that occurred and the pain that came with it was something that was associated with me much more and much more dearly than my car. It was my mother. I remember taking the call, casually sitting and talking with friends in Reed Hall. It was my mother on the line, crying. She had just found out that she had stage 3 breast cancer. Being so far away, I couldn't take her being in pain, so I packed up, withdrew from Ohio State, and moved home to Georgia. It wasn't about me anymore. It wasn't about my dreams or goals, and especially it wasn't about losing my first car. It was about survival. Survival through all the pain and hardships and obstacles to come. Days turned into weeks and into months, and I bled, just like my mother. And I bled out hard. Just like a Civil War physician treating soldiers, I wanted to remove the pain that was caused by my chaos. I wanted to feel what it was like to bleed out and remove whatever bad blood that was causing my pain. Years would pass through all the chemotherapy and intervention before she was pronounced cancer-free. And while the mention of the word cancer still gives me the chills, I'm reminded of the years lost fighting the disease and the time spent reminiscing or where it could have been today without such a series of tragic events. Now maybe it's unfair of me to compare my wounds to that of a soldier, but recently I discovered a device called a scarificator that reminded me of the years that I spent fighting the disease. It was a rather cruel looking tool that consisted of 12 knife-like blades, all of which shot through the skin in unison with the flick of a spring-loaded switch. As I came to find out, the device was used by medical professionals in the 17th and 18th centuries and was operated in such a way to balance bodily humors, like that of the blood and to remove infection from the body of diseased souls. And while the device offered a way to remove pain and suffering during a traumatic event, it always left the body with a token that the patient would never forget. 
and a constant reminder of the experiences that came along with it. As I look back on these 11 years, I see myself riddled with scars. The blades of the scarificator came down fast, and they came down hard, leaving brief yet visible impressions on my soul that I will never forget. Only now, years later, can I look back and be reminded of the past, or what to try to avoid in the future. And only now can I be reminded of the souvenirs that I possess. Do you see what I see?